Welcome, it's Paola Siskanik here in the community live with you tonight. I'm so glad that you are here. So um, just gonna give it a little bit of time for everybody to get in. Let's see how that works. And I'm gonna try a few things here, which is to see myself live. <laughs> That's so fun. I'm gonna watch this so that I can actually see the chat this time around. So. Tell me where you're from. And that would be kind of fun too. Great. Anyway, hope every hi, Angela. Hi, Elizabeth. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. This is awesome. Okay, great. Good. Then I'll be able to see the chat as it keeps going through and then I won't miss it. So you'll see me looking over a few times, but that's going to be just to <laughs> get the chat going. Um, I can see the chat here. Hi. Yay. It's morning for you, isn't it, Angela? Finally. <laughs> Elizabeth, you're here from California. Julie, Hi, Julianne. Very good to see you guys. I am um, very, very excited about this because um, something kind of close to my heart in the sense that um, I will be talking to everybody about, I will, heads up, full disclosure here at the very end, I will introduce a Thrive once again. I just want to let people know I'm very excited because I've been getting a bunch of requests to open the doors to Thrive again. So just rest assured, we're going to do a 14-day uh, free trial on that too. But, you know, stay to the end <laughs> in any case, full disclosure here. I wanted to let you know about that because, as I said, it um, the more we do together, the more we're learning. It's just been really great. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. I've started this whole new series called the Let's Homeschool series. And the, as I said, the longer I do this and the more I do coaching and speaking within the community, I realize that there's still just so many people who are, um, whether you're new at homeschooling or you've somebody that has um, been a veteran, we are really literally all in the same boat this time of year, you know, and even somebody who is not homeschooling anymore. I, I feel that way too. Um, there are, I think that our lives are kind of like tidal, <laughs> hopefully not like a tidal wave that's going to hit you down right now, <laughs> but it's basically something, um, that is cyclical. And so, uh, we need to embrace that season, but there's some really good practical things, you know? Yes, a boat is sinking. <laughs> exactly. Oh, please, Julian. I We're here to not let your boat sink. We're here to actually throw out the life preservers. And that's exactly what this whole workshop's about. I, in generally, from doing these things live, it usually takes a few minutes for people to kind of get ready. Hopefully go take a minute, get something to drink. Um, I have my nice handy glass of water there. And so I, in a little bit of a, in a minute or so, I'm going to go live and then people can just um, come in as they please, but also be rest assured that this is also being recorded. Yay. <laughs> because when I did a survey and went again from experience is that, you know, your life's busy. You cannot just drop things at, at a moment's notice. And so what a wonderful thing for technology now to give us this ability for me to record myself while I'm talking to you. But there is nothing really as, as incredibly sweet as live. Now, I will say I'm doing this live in the community and soon they're, they're going to release it soon that I can now invite you guys in just like we do on a Zoom call. But for the moment, you get just me and you just get to chat in the chat group. So please uh, know that there is on a mobile device. I, I even have my little mobile device here. You can follow along with the chat over there, type messages. You even have the handy little emoji because I will be trying to ask questions in the middle of this. So we have, hello, Camille. You're from Frederick. Um, and then Marie, Nebraska. Yay. And um, Let's see. So we have, oh, Maria, you can't hear. I don't know. Does anybody else have that problem? <laughs> anyway, Maria, I hope that's not the case. Um, um, but anyway, I know that in New York, people are hearing me. And then there's what, Jocelyn? Do you say Jocelyn? 
um, you're from California. So sorry if I did not say your name correct. <laughs> anyway, please forgive me. I know what that's like with Paula. Uh, it's very difficult for people to pronounce. Anyway, you couldn't hear until you pressed join live stream. That is true. Okay. So if, um, let me, I'm going to put a little note in maybe in here as well is click. Uh, if you bear with me one minute, I'm going to put in here, join, um, in there, join live stream. And that should really help people. So it has the button that says, join the live stream, click join. Thanks for that heads up live stream. And then you get in here and you're, it's kind of a cool thing. It's kind of like, I guess what they do on Facebook lives, although I've never done that before. So there we go. All right, here we are back. Yay. Hello, Kelly from Michigan. Allie, thank you for that. Um, hopefully we'll get everybody in here. I'm just going to wait just another minute to uh, get people acclimated again, get your drink. And then I'm going to go share the screen do a little presentation, but then I want a chance for us to do a little Q&A. So um, take your time here. Let's see. She got it on her computer, not her phone. Uh, you know, <laughs> those technology. It's very temperamental. So good, good. Everybody is with us here. Oh, how are you all doing tonight? I hope that, um, and I'm hoping that this is a good time for us to be together. One of the things that's really pretty tricky, as you can see, like, Angela's all the way in Malaysia. It's actually the future. She's in the, for those of us in the United States, she's on her new day all the way across, across the world on the other side of the globe. Um, and so I tried to offer things at different times. So I thought, let's do this as an evening time. I know that during the day, everybody's got a full life. Um, I'm suspect if anybody wants to type in there too, I, I also suspect that Saturdays are really not a great day in the sense that you've got, I know for myself, that was my planning day. And that was also time that we ran a lot of errands or we had sports or different activities. So uh, again, hoping that on a weeknight, this is a good time for everybody. Okay. So here we are. We've got now some people chiming in, everybody. Good, good, Jillian. Thank you for telling me that's a good time. And do know you can chat. I will see the chat. I'm going to share my screen in just a minute. And I, as I said, turned on my phone so that I can keep watching your messages. <laughs> okay. So without further ado, let's, whoop, let's get that screen share here. Okay. It'll just take me a minute. And then we're going to put on this one. There we go. Perfect. Just takes a minute. Yay. Wonderful. So here we are this week's live. Let's homeschool. It's a brand new series that I started last um, in the summer. And there's a few other videotapes. And if you just say let's homeschool, I'm also going to put these on the YouTube channel as a playlist called the Let's, Let's Homeschool. And I kind of like to think of these as little mini workshops, little mini teachings that I do. One of them is just on choosing curriculum. Um, so this one's another follow-up. This is kind of like a mid-semester little teaching. And so I want you to be able to know that one of the beautiful things about community, community life, is that we have this opportunity to share with each other. And it is really my honor and privilege to be with you, to share some of the things I've learned. So I'm going to do a little bit of that, but I also want you guys to share with me, you know, what are things happening? What's going on? And it was really through the prompting of listening to those conversations that I put this particular workshop together. And so this is brand new, but like I love with all things, I like to begin with Prayer. So may I invite you into prayer as we begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is St. Teresa's bookmark prayer. Let nothing disturb you, nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is wanting to him who possesses God. God alone suffices. Yeah, isn't that a beautiful prayer? That is one that my daughter wrote for me by hand, laminated it, and so I could keep it handy with me. It used to be by my bedside, but now I keep it with me and I've printed it everywhere. <laughs> so here we are. 
mid semester blues, you know, and so these are some little snippets of things that I've gotten from personal emails within the community and also just knowing from myself. So what is happening right now? Here we are in the middle of October, middle of the semester. Looming up ahead is going to be the Advent and Christmas season. We know that's a busy, crazy time. There seems to be a lot of pressure during this particular time. And yet, at least I know in the United States, the weather's changing. The days are getting shorter. I know the other down south, it's the opposite. You're gearing up for the end of the year. Your summer is going to begin. So what do we do? We're battling with our children on a daily basis. We feel like we're veering off track and we've lost focus, momentum. And you have this general sense that things are either unraveling or you have missed alignment. Maybe you never really felt your groove or your rhythm yet. So you start second guessing your curriculum. You also feel like maybe nothing's working. What happened? Oh my goodness. Wouldn't it be nice if we just had this nice big button reset and we can say do over and just start all over again? Well, we can. And that's why I'm here for you because we're going to create together your very own reset button. So your success, your success in the homeschool life cycle is really like that. Just like our liturgical year follows a cycle, the seasons follow a cycle. It is just so natural that we should have the same thing happening here. And what is that? Is that we have a repetition of very key events that help to make our homeschool life, homeschool life a success. And it begins with the first thing, which is that big why. And we're gonna talk about these a little bit in more detail. Your big why, why we homeschool, we're going to then anchor that with that one goal per year per child. And from that, we create a homeschool journey that we travel on with the family and then always following it up with self-care and making connections, just like we're making this connection tonight in this community. And they are all related to each other and they move in a rhythm, a cycle. For most of us, so this very first step, the first step let's talk about in resetting our life, right? is that our vision of school does not look anything like what, you know, the reality of a homeschool lifestyle. And I call it a lifestyle because homeschooling does not happen from nine to three, and then the rest of life happens. And for many of you, you know this, we know this intellectually in our heads, but we want to get from our head to our heart to actually physically doing that. So there are certain key things. One is there is no stop or start time like there is in a school building. There is also, big one, hear me say this, no correct specific age for each grade. We, we say, we talk about mastery learning, and when we talk about mastery learning, we are talking about moving from skill to skill, concept to concept, to build bit by bit in terms of forming a beautiful foundation of education. That also means very little. Here's the secret. From K to eight, there's very little that you actually have to put on a transcript, record. I mean, there are things you want progress to be held. Some states are a little more, in some places are a little more restrictive in terms of what kind of reporting you have to do. But even with that, that is increasingly becoming much more easy to just talk about specific concepts, okay? So rest in that as well. So we have no homework. We have more time because we're mastering, we're doing the work when we're having school life, which is can be flexible as well. Again, no stop, no start time. We have that flexibility. We move with the rhythm of our family in real life. So you're not a teacher standing at the chalkboard ready to pontificate and to lecture your children. No, you're sitting side by side with them very often. And I will say myself, I think I benefited sometimes the most from my homeschooling my children because it was a journey for my own purification, a journey, pilgrim journey for my own growing in faith, but in the gift of my children and learning about them. So there's absolutely no fluff in anything you do every day. And there's no hidden agenda you have to 
navigate around. So the truth about education is that when you know what is important, you can ignore the rest. Yes. And I've said this time and time again, you can even skip subjects. Yes, you can. And that K to eight are foundational. Really relax about it. Don't feel like you have to hit every subject every single day because life lessons count. You're going to look for ways to help your children feel a sense of success. And, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail in terms of what do I mean by a sense of success? Remember, parents, you parents, all of us are more qualified to guide our children's education than anyone else. You have their best interest at heart and God has placed them in your care. People are natural problem solvers. They're naturally creative. Go with nature. That's one of the other things. Very often at this time, we tend to have preconceived ideas of what school should look like, but also how our children should be solving problems and handling what's in front of them. And what we need to do is we have this opportunity to get to know about their temperament, get to know about who they are. Oops, here you go. A phone call came through, but um, I, I, I turned that one off. <laughs> anyway, here we are. So people are natural problem solvers and creative. This is how you know we're live. Okay. So parents are education ed, educators by the very nature of being the parent. You know your children better than anybody else. Oops, um, there we go. Okay, so we're still here. Are we still here? I hope so. Okay. Anyway, is everybody still seeing me okay? I hope so. Let's get back to sharing the screen. Let's go back here to the... Um, I'm going to go back to this one. There we are. Hopefully you guys, if anybody... Yes, you can still hear. You can see the screen. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. That one caught me for a loop. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thumbs up. Beautiful. Okay. So as a parent, you are an educator. You know your children better than anybody else. And you know the best education for them does begin with you. This I love is because I want you when you reset and when you think about those things, it's my daughter, Anne, telling me she's going to call me later. So there you go. <laughs> Can you see the slide again? You can see me. Oh, but you can't see my slides. Thank you for that. Okay, let's see if we can get back to that. Let's go back to sharing the screen. Oh, you see me. Yay. Okay. There we go. We're going to do that. Ta-da. Okay, great. Back to the screen. Just hand me a thumbs now. Can you see the screens again? Give me a thumbs up. I'll see in the chat section that you're doing just great. So thank you for bearing with me on this techno challenge. <laughs> yes, very good. And yes, thank you. You know, my daughter, Anne is, or, you know, she's a history major. This is one of those beautiful stories that she's, she works in, you know, from the time she was 11, she did, she did volunteer work in a history museum and went on to get her master's in it. And we're still very close and in touch. Yeah. Fruits of homeschooling. <laughs> anyway, So you see, you are much more in control of your child's education than you think you are. And that is not only empowering, but is such a beautiful gift from God. So step one was to really think about what is homeschooling? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Step two here is your big why. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I will send, you know, I put, I'll put to the replay my little worksheet that has prompts for you, but I really, really mean it right out. Why? Why am I homeschooling? It is really a good statement. You pray together with your spouse. It's between your spouse and God. It is very specific to your unique family. You need to think about what your education or what does success look like and put it down in writing because part of that reset button we're creating is to go to that big why. And I cannot begin to tell you how many times I had to refocus simply pivot what I was doing by going back to that why. So for example, here, um, I did do a blog article recently about what do I mean by education? You can read that in the community, but it is very, 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 very important and very uh, beneficial for you and your spouse to really paint a vivid picture. What does it mean? Does it mean in the evenings we sit together, we read aloud, we go on field trips, we make some of our vacations around that. We then, um, 
know that music's important, therefore we'll invest in music lessons. You know, all those little nuances, don't take it for granted that each spouse understands or just knows because you're creating a lifestyle with your family. So for my family, education, we always believed was a process, but a lifelong pursuit of acquiring intellectual curiosity and a sense of wonder. Yeah. And it really begins by being grateful and thankful for the precious souls that God has given you. And, and you don't start and you don't start by always going back to curriculum. And part of why we feel overwhelmed is we consistently are trying to force in a curriculum, somebody else's concept of what they think your children need or what should be done at this time of year. And when those two are disconnected, we feel overwhelmed and we feel as if we're veering off the path. Okay, so step three, and this one is the most important, really, is that have you defined one goal for your child for just this year? And chances are, if you have not taken the time to really, really think about one goal, then you're missing the piece to the entire puzzle. Because that one goal is central to giving the harmony that you are striving for, you're craving for right here in the middle. When we have the, okay, the big why we go, that's the big overarching thing. But what gives us the details of our day-to-day, -day, how we're going to spend that time with each child and what we want comes from that goal. And I mean one, one goal. And I know that maybe this sounds a little contrary to some advice out there or whatever people feel. And they feel like, well, uh, uh, what do you mean one goal? Will I never then cover all the bases? And homeschooling parents are very, very... Um, you know, they want, they take it they're so serious, the responsibility, they don't want to shirk this duty. And therefore you feel this impending responsibility that I'm going to, there's going to be holes in the curriculum. After 25 years of homeschooling my children, coaching literally hundreds, hundreds of families from all over the world. And I have witnessed dozens of adults who were homeschooled who are now parents and homeschooling their children or not homeschooling their children what really really mattered most in all of that was that we wanted to help our children to do what they already want to do yes to help them feel successful because it's tied to their god-given gifts to serve god and to heed the call of holiness and nothing else matters, okay? It really is about your relationship with your children. It really is about paying attention. And I don't mean when I say do what they already want to do. It's it's paying attention to naturally their curiosity and sense of wonder and their strengths and interests. And they will tell you, they will be giving you so much food for you to be able to develop that one goal. Use this, this idea of one goal, one goal for each child for your reset button. That one goal is the focus for that child. So if you've not determined it, if you've not figured out what that should be, you're going to feel out of focus. You're going to feel like a revering off course. You need to retune your plan and what you do each day or what books or materials to refocus, reframe, reframe it towards that goal. And like I said before, the only way you can do that is let go of that school model. And you have to stop playing the comparison game. What are schools doing? What's my neighbor doing? Um, and, and how are they comparing to what I did when I was in school? So the big question becomes, how do I choose that one goal? And what we first have to do is land the plane. What do I mean by that? Well, goals are kind of like big lofty huge things like a big airplane up there, 30,000 feet in the air. Yeah, they are like, well, I want my children to love to read. That's a big, beautiful goal. And it's a noble goal, but it's not here on earth. It's too big for us, too nebulous for us to figure that out. So we need our goals to be specific, realistic, and obtainable. And, and something that we can see some progress in a reasonable amount of time. I'd like to think that goals are really more an outcome that you're looking for. What's the outcome or what is that aspiration you have for that child? So let's talk about some examples of goals. So if goals are aspirations, 
they can take the form of either academic, a life skill, a virtual or spiritual goals. And one, one, you will feel one that's the cream that rises to the top for that particular child. Okay. So that goal can be in, let's say for academic, it'd be feel the success of reading a chapter book. You want that child to really know what that feels like, to feel that. And everything else that you determine for that child always has to have centered around or place subordinate to that particular goal for that child. It can be that your child um, really doesn't understand um, and feels like um, they can't grasp basic math facts, all the, you know, um, different addition, subtraction, math facts. Uh, you want them to feel confident about that academic. Maybe they're a public, you know, it's something where they're, they feel really, when they're reading aloud, they hesitate and they're slow and they want to become more proficient with that. So it's this, this feeling of success academically. It can take on a goal like a life skill. Maybe your child's like all over the place. They're counting on you to tell them what to do every minute of the day. Mommy, where's my book? Mommy, what do I do? What time is it? What day are we doing this? You really want that child to start to take control of it. You feel that's the goal that will help them feel a success. You know, I know what I'm doing today. I'm going into today. I mean, that's a life skill, okay? Another could be a virtue, perhaps. Perhaps it's something where you notice this particular child tends to maybe not be as generous with their siblings as, as you feel, you know, it's, some, it's something they're wrestling with. This is a good, incredible aspiration to have a sense of generosity. And that can take its form in terms of, again, what's the specific goal? being generous with their siblings, not with the world, not with everything, but having them, giving them practical um, examples of, or opportunities, I should say, of being able to be generous. It could mean that they decide to play a game when they don't really feel like playing a game with this particular, oh, they get to choose the movie where we're going to have movie night tonight. Instead of constantly fighting with each other, they're going to practice that in, in just your daily life. And then the, another one is spiritual. And that may be, and I love this one specifically as our children move to the teen years, it may be the goal that your kids are relying on you for their spirituality and their personal relationship with God. And we now need to transition them into developing a prayer life. And it may be just, again, specific, one new prayer routine for that particular child. So how do we achieve those goals? You know, this, again, um, a lot of what I'm talking about are the kinds of things we do in the Thrive Group. I know that I'm throwing a lot at you, and I know that also this is something you can go back and listen to, okay? But it really, really, really is the cornerstone, and it is the reset button, because when we set that one goal, it really, it eases everything else. Everything seems to fall into place. So how do we achieve our goals that we set? So what we do is we brainstorm a bunch of behaviors to achieve that goal. So let's say it's the one that you want to teach your child to feel a success at reading a small chapter book. You're going to brainstorm things like, um, you know, we're going to go to the library and we're going to pick out a couple of books. We're going to, again, uh, just all sorts of things that would be conducive to that. We're going to find a time during the day, every day after lunch, everybody, you know, that particular child, their behavior would be that um, they're going to sit with mommy for 15 minutes, three times a week. Um, and then just so, so all these things that you just brainstorm and you pick things that you think are doable. Okay. And make them very small, make, make those behaviors, those things around that goal really small. Doesn't have to be, you know, brain rocket science or anything like that. And try to anchor that behavior to some sort of existing routine. So for example, if it was, I want my child to be more generous with their siblings, we're going to anchor that to something, let's say that that particular child is going to make lunch for the toddler before they make their own lunch. So this is something you normally do. We have lunch time. They usually make their own lunch, but this particular child, you want to see them becoming more generous to their younger siblings. Therefore, you're anchoring this new little teeny behavior, one small change to a routine you already have. So they're making sandwich for the little toddler. And then when they do that, 
please celebrate no matter what those wins are and develop natural ways to do that. And it can just literally be a fist pump. It can be, yeah, whoa, you know, you way to go. I'm not talking about take them out for ice cream or anything like that. I really, really believe that our children are always looking for, they want to know they're being seen. They want to know they're being heard. They want to be virtuous. They want to feel success because they know that they have a calling to give and to serve uh, this, you know, to serve God in this world. And it is in us. It's part of us. Let us take the time to do that. So then we got to think, well, how can I make these new behaviors or whatever skills, that one goal, easier to do? Don't you love this? Because sometimes the kids are going to resist or they're going to say, that's a huge thing, mom. And you're going to say, how in the world are they ever going to get there? So very simply, what is, you know, just ask, what is making this particular goal for this, you know, really, really hard for this particular child? And there's three ways that we can then make things easier. Because if we change the ability to do something, then it makes it something that will happen, will definitely feel that sense of success. So the first way would be increase a skill set. And what do I mean by that? I mean, like, for example, let's say this particular child, their goal was the, to feel a sense of success in learning the guitar, you know? So increase their skill set for learning a guitar it doesn't mean that you as a parent have to learn to play the guitar and teach them. It just means that you're going to give them maybe guitar lessons, you know, and then you're also going to get the tools and resources. You're going to buy the guitar. You're going to get some books about it, maybe watch some videos about it. And then what you're going to do is make that new skill. Okay. Uh, or behavior that that's related to that goal, teeny tiny, really tiny, break it up. If your goal is for your child to, let's say your teenager, we're really going to get through algebra. This child really needs to feel a sense of success about mastering algebra. What are you going to do? We may take an online course. We may be able to bring in a tutor. We're going to then look at the tools and resources. What kind of notebook? What kind of desk are they working at? What kind of lighting? What kind of environment? What time of day? And then we're going to make it tiny. And we're going to say, all oh, right, let's just talk about mastering one part of algebra. You know, let's say we're going to do two unknowns and master that and maybe get the first, you know, three concepts in the book and then celebrate the wins all along the way. You know this yourself. And this is what I want you to feel a sense of success in your homeschooling because it is the catalyst for sustained growth and change. And as much as as I'm getting older, I really don't like to change. I know I feel like Bilbo Baggins in The Hobbit, want to stay in my little hobbit hole. And I know that when I'm uncomfortable, and maybe you're feeling uncomfortable now, it's because God is calling you to grow and to change. So that when something feels successful, you want to do more of that. You have more feelings so that you, you engage with it, you do more of it, and you make it a part of your life. Make have that, make that feel the same way for your children. The goal needs to be tied to a sense of success. So they engage, do more of it and make it a part of your life. How do I know you can do this? It's not by me. It's through prayer. It's through, yes, I've had the gift of the, you know, I'm further down the journey than you guys. I see that this has happened. And from this weak instrument myself, my ability to graduate my own children through all of this. This is so true from Pope St. John Paul II in his letter to families. Parents are the first and most important educators of their own children. And they also possess a fundamental competence in this area. They are educators because they are parents. And I know if you followed any of the things I do, I use this quote often. It is one I hope you just copy, post on your wall whenever you're feeling, you know, uh, insecure, not confident about it itself. So this last one is just that extra assurance that I'm going to ask you, do you have your oxygen mask on? Yeah. And that's really what this is all about. This is all about you also together in community, 
And that's what we are. We're, we're doing this in the community. We have plenty of opportunities. I, I really hope that the conversation continues here. You tell me too, what is it that you need? But more than that, you're needed to help the other families. We need each other. We are better together. This isn't about, again, like the school model, some expert is telling me what to do. No, group of parents all on the same journey are telling each other what to do. So there we go. We're going to decline. That was my husband. Yay. <laughs> anyway, so together, I'm going to, I wonder if I never turned off my, that's what it was. I never put my do not disturb on. Okay. So now we're good. <laughs> anyway, So let me just do a couple quick quotes. Melissa says, this is a thriving online community of Catholic homeschooling parents where I can bring questions and where I can learn. And I hope that maybe a little piece of this is something that is, will help your homeschool. And Mary says, thank you for helping me set my feet firmly on the ground. Well, at least long enough to pick up and plant good seeds for a wonderful homeschooling adventure. And that's what I hope is, is true for you as well. I wouldn't be anywhere without my mentors. Um, they sustain me day to day guides. They prayed for me just like I pray for you every day. Uh, we have a Wednesday live rosary. I'd love to see you guys come or at least listen to the recording. We pray together. We pray our intentions or add your intentions to get together there. And then we turn off the recording and we just really share with each other because we do. We're in a community of families that have a shared vision and a shared mission and a shared love of the Eucharist, of the Lord, of his blessed mother. And, and it is my honor to pay this forward to you. So what I'm hoping you will do is invite other families that you know into this community as well. And as I said, I'm also, um, oh, I see. What time is the Wednesday Rosary? It's 10 o'clock Eastern time, um, 10 o'clock Eastern time. I know, again, it's really hard to find <laughs> the best time for everybody but um, we welcome children and families, and we really would love it to be something where you get to meet other families and you can lead part of the decade. So it can be part of your school day um, just once a week. I call it, I love it's Wednesday. I purposely kind of did that because it's hump day, just like this is kind of hump day for the semester, <laughs> middle of October. But Nicole says, I love the encouragement, the sharing of ideas and real life stories of what worked, what didn't work for families on their homeschool journey. It helps dispel the darkness. Yeah, that creeps into our minds about what we should and shouldn't be doing in our homeschool, whether we're even capable of doing it. Yeah. So I, as I mentioned before, when I started this, um, the Thrive Group is opening up really maybe for the next week. Um, just let me know. You can always message me. We had opened it up in August. I'd love to open up the doors again, 14-day free trial. So that just means jump in. You don't pay anything for the first 14 days. And uh, if you, you feel that it suits your needs, wonderful. If not, you know you have us in, you have support in the whole community. And again, I'll end this here with another quote from, Pope St. John Paul II, it's important that families attempt to build bonds of solidarity among themselves. This allows them to assist each other in the educational enterprise. Parents are educated by other parents and children by other children. So I hope you join today. I'll put the links later. If not, certainly I'm going to stop sharing now. Hello, back to me again. Great, good, good. I hope that this has been just that little um, jolt to set your reset button. You've got it now. And and um, I'm just going to open this up to any questions. And thank you, Jay, you know, Cheryl. Uh, yep, rosary time is very beautiful, isn't it? It's such a gift to pray together. Uh, it was something that we started when we did Catholic homeschool week. Every day we were meeting for rosary and I loved it so much that um, it was just something we need to do together if we're not centered on our faith and our prayers for each other. And so thank you. Thank you very much. Good. She has Julianne says she has a smile on her face. I'm so happy. Good. Feel free to use the emojis. How are you feeling? So I'm sure a lot of the things, as I said, um, 
I throw a lot at you. And I do want to assure you that, you know, in the Thrive Group, we do this slowly, continuously, week by week, month by month. So if you're looking for that kind of support, but also know that you have the free community as well. Post your questions. There are groups that are there too. Um, you know, it's what we put into it. We will get back 10 hundred fold, undoubtedly. And I've seen that happen time and time again. And it's not like a Facebook group where I don't know about you, but I certainly feel very sometimes like I, I go in this rabbit hole and it seems to always make me leave me feeling wanting or at worst discouraged. And I, it seems to emphasize more of a comparison game because we can't have that kind of deep conversation, deep relationship that we can in our own private space because, you know, there isn't this feed coming in. So one of the other things close to my heart in terms of community, and I hope to do this in the new year, is bringing um, people uh, together, teaching each other how to do this, you know, like locally, trying to invite people into your own homes and being able to do some things that we journey together in such a way that we're helping to support you even locally and passing that out as well. So any thoughts on sparking internal motivations? Yeah. My oldest recognizes when she doesn't want to do something. Yeah. And that's, you know, it, that's a great question, Camille, because um, behavior is about motivation, your ability and some sort of a prompt. And that that's just like, not me. It's different brain science books. There's a really great book called Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg. And he really has some really, really great examples there, especially as we move our kids into the teen years. But one of the things he talks about is, and you will witness this too, motivation is kind of a tricky thing because it's tied to our emotions. Okay. So if we are, you know, want some sort of behavior, we want our kids to do things perhaps that they don't want to do that we know that's good for them. Sometimes it's not about just browbeating them into it or letting them get away with it. It's about making that task simpler. So it might be sometimes just making the ability to complete that task simpler. So for example, again, and, and hopefully, Natalie, you'll let me, <laughs> today we had a call and Natalie, one of the um, families that was with us in the Thrive Group has a, a seven-year-old and she asked the question about math. It's in the, um, no, it's in the Thrive Group. So if you're a Thrive member, you go listen to that conversation. But very briefly, the whole point is that um, she's so good at knowing, she knows her daughter, she knows her personality, it's wonderful, but it's also this ability to say, um, we need to sometimes break down a task by just time, a time limit, you know, and their age, you know, sometimes, yeah, there you go. Julian says my 14 year old started using a timer after reading. Yes. Steve Covey's teen success book. Oh, do, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> it was suggested during the summer. And it's true. I think, well, I love, especially little kids have zero sense, zero sense of, um, time. You know, I love somebody once did this thing where they were like, um, ask a little kid how a recipe for making cookies. And they'll say, well, you need five pounds of flour and three pounds of sugar and put it in the oven for two hours. So we're getting that kind of behavior because they don't have a sense of time. And yet sometimes a physical timer to say that gives them this idea, you're going to do math for 15 minutes. And of course, there have to be consequences to your actions. This kind of leads to another discussion about discipline. And that's that's not separate, but it is related in such a way that sometimes we do want to um, not dialogue or kids get them to do stuff. It's just about we need immediate obedience. But we also have to ask, are we asking things that are unreasonable? Are we just saying, I want my seven-year-old to finish a worksheet where it may actually be very laborious for them. And it's just because the textbook company thought that one worksheet should be done in a 30 minute setting. Well, that, that may not work for your child. So really being able to take into consideration 
what are you asking? Make it reasonable, make it doable. So that's what I mean about ability. If we make something simpler, set aside so that there is a, they will succeed at that. It's not repetition that will build that beautiful obedience. It is the ability to succeed, to feel that success, and then want more of it. So that's a, a natural way of doing. So great. Marie says, um, I need to revisit my one goal for each child. And that's true. Yet, yeah, aren't we just busy that even if we did that kind of work earlier in the year, we forgot about it. And then we're kind of wondering why we're feeling off track. And it's because we do need to remind ourselves of that one goal and see if our plans are lined up to that. And Gretchen says, Suggestions for breaking out of school mentality while enrolled with a homeschool program. We do all traditional homeschool, added some um, homeschool connections, pre-recorded classes this year that we can go at our own pace, but still feels very schooly. Gretchen, that is a really hard thing. And, and it is because our educational system has taught us to trust and believe in an expert to tell you what to do. So part of it is, and, and we can go through this. I, I go through it in the Catholic Homeschool Blueprint, um, that too, which is this whole idea that there are some basic skills that you need to master for your children. And it's the ability to think about each individual child and what that child needs to get moved from point A to point B. So um I'd say the first thing to break out of school mentality when you're using a home study program is to look at it through the lens of that one goal. So that what you're doing is then you're tailoring, even though it's a structured curriculum, you're tailoring it though still to the needs of that one particular child. And I would say probably in that curriculum, if it's an academic goal, it may exist already in there. And then you may look at all the other subjects and see where they fall in that. And you may actually say, well, we're going to skip some of those lessons. Or like, for example, if it's a child who really is struggling with reading and the curriculum is asking them to do writing assignments and you think the reading is more important, I would then say, let's wait on those writing assignments. Because again, no goals. I mean, there's no grades. You don't have to do in a box curriculum. You don't have to do third grade writing at the same time. You know, you can mix and match grades is what I guess what I'm trying to say. So you try to make it work for yourself. I'll be truthful with you. You know, I went down that road myself in many ways in those early years, and I kept substituting more and more and more and more that I eventually <laughs> did my own curriculum because it was just too many things that I had to keep jockeying around. So good. So the curriculum can feel like a boss sometimes. And that's it. Are we a slave to the curriculum? And that's the reason why I say it never starts with the curriculum. It always has to start with why, that big overarching goal. What do I want? What does my me and my spouse were gifted these beautiful children? What does educational education look, feel like, and is my program you know, going to match that because it's got to take into consideration your family. You know, what works for your family is not going to work for the next person's family. And that's wonderful, <laughs> you know? So Marie says, how do I find your blog? Catholichomeschool.online. Catholichomeschool.online. I'll type that into the chat right here, but um, is the blog and the podcast, but I'm pretty sure I post them also Catholic homeschool dot online. And um, I post them also in the community. Um, I In the topics in the community, there's a menu. If you're on a laptop on the left side, bar has topics. And I just moved all the podcasts to the topic podcast. And I just realized I need to do that with all the blogs. So <laughs> thank you, Marie. I think I need to Take all those blogs, put it under topic of blogs, and you'll see them in there as well. Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you for asking for that. And yeah, Gretchen, yeah, you substitute a lot, don't you? And after a while, and that's where it comes in where they're saying you're the most qualified and you know your children best. 
Um, and that's why this community is here too. And it isn't about just like, oh, what math book do you do? This or that. We really talk about, well, what's the goal for your child this year? What are they struggling with? What do you want to improve? Let's see if we can match that together. And we do. We go through some of those in the Thrive Group in particular. We do that um, in, we do twice a month in-service huddles where you work on things, but we also do teachable moments once the first week of every month. Um, and you always have opportunity to ask questions and ask your questions in the main community as well. Great. Okay. And if there are any other questions, and I am just so happy <laughs> to be doing this with you guys again today. I know your time is so precious. And so I'm so grateful that you even spent some time here with me. I, I, I just, um, I just want you to know that there's just this beautiful, beautiful group of people. We pray for each other. They've been praying for my, my family. Uh, um, those prayers are being answered daily. Um, homeschooling was a great gift for our family. It was not easy. And, and you know, truth be told, my family, um, I have a cute little story. When things were really tough, and this is where discipline play, plays in. I always say, have your punishments ready. Because when you just come and disciplining your children, just what comes to the top of your mind, my daughter reminded me of a time where our family ran a manual books for many years. And we, that was our livelihood. Okay. We're a homeschooling family. So how could I jump out of homeschooling if this is our whole family business? <laughs> so I used to even feel sometimes more trapped in that way. Sometimes when I was second guessing myself and she said, mommy, do you remember? I remember once you said to me, a threat for my daughter would be, well, I'll just put you back in school. So some of the kids, yes, I know, want to go to school. But for most of my kids, they are all very grateful we didn't go to school. And her older brother said, don't worry about it. They have their businesses homeschooling. She'll never send you to school. So <laughs> I thought that was a great story to share with you. Because, yeah, in those moments that you're so, like, you know, <laughs> fed up, I'm not homeschooling you anymore. I'm going to send you to school. And yet her older brother told her, don't worry. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, it was a great story. And um, as I said, I know my children, they're all close to each other. It's, it's a beautiful gift to homeschool. It really is precious. And I pray for you all. If, uh, any, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kindness there. Thank you for your time. Yes, you said that to your kids too. Yay, Angela. Solidarity. <laughs> yes. But don't make threats you're not going to keep. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it happens. <laughs> the kids will call you out on it. So uh, without um, further ado, just know that you're in my heart. I will definitely, I'll just uh, turn off my uh, video here and all. But uh, you can message in the chat for a few more minutes. And I thank you again. May God bless you all abundantly. Please see you in the community. Bye-bye.